Rita. Um, I'm interested in your response to the commentary we've heard since this attack was uh, took place. Um, a lot of uh, politicians even. We've got a Green senators here, including uh, Maureen Faruqi, saying this was just an unacceptable act. A lot of people are uh, calling it an act of terror, essentially. Is that how you see it? Um, I would have thought targeting... Hezbollah operatives was as far away as from terrorism as you could possibly get. They're not, they weren't uh, targeting um, uh, just uh, regular folk, but uh, there is a lot of commentary that this was an indiscriminate attack and innocent people were caught up in it. Yeah, because everything Israel does is wrong. <laughs> Glad you cleared that one up for us, Richard. That's, and now I understand what I've been misreading. Yeah, right. Thank you, Richard. Excellent. Good. That's what Senator Maureen Faruqi <laughs> meant. What Everything meant, Israel yeah. does. Well, you nailed it there, Richard. Uh, carry on. Yep. Yeah, I mean, you know, Israel carries out an attack in Gaza um, to kill terrorists hiding behind human shields. And tragically, uninvolved civilians sometimes die, despite the precautions that uh, the IDF take. And then, so that's 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 wrong, because it risks civilian death. Then, when, is, when Israel carries out a really pinpoint attack like this, OK, there may have been one or two people killed who shouldn't have been killed in this attack, but that happens in war. And it's not terrorism. This is not a terrorist attack. It's the most, probably the most precise uh, anti-terrorist attack you mm. could carry out. Mm. Uh, and Israel is, is it perfectly entitled to target those people who have been firing rockets into Israel, more than 8,000 rockets since the 8th of October, firing rockets almost every day into Israel. Why shouldn't they carry these attacks? And Richard, just you mentioned that, so surely now we can expect to see... Um, uh, you know, tell us what the war goals are. Netanyahu said the goal is to get those people who had to move out of northern Israel because of those rocket attacks you've mentioned. Uh, can they now go back in? Is, is Israel going to focus on Hezbollah now finishing off the job? Do we, will we see Israeli troops moving into Lebanon? Uh, or are they now going to refocus on, on Hamas? What do you think the, the uh, strategy is going forward in the next few weeks? Well, Hamas have been largely defeated in Gaza. They're still there. There's still uh, terrorist acts taking place inside Gaza by the remnants of Hamas, but they've been largely defeated. And that means that the IDF now are able to move <coughs> reinforcement out of Gaza to the, to the northern front. And we have seen, in fact, we've seen um, today, only, even only today, we've seen devastating attacks by Israel against Hezbollah in Beirut and elsewhere. Uh, killing large numbers of terrorists, destroying rocket launchers, preempting what the IDF believed was a, a planned, major planned attack against Israel. So they preempted that. But if, mm. but we have seen this evening. Uh, I'm not sure what how that relates to the time zone that you're in or I'm in, and the time zone in Israel. But yeah. today, shall we say, yeah. today or yesterday, we've seen um, yeah, a very very uh, significant barrage of rockets fired out of Lebanon. About 120 rockets reportedly going deep into Israel, some of them not actually hitting Haifa, which is further south than Hezbollah has been seriously attacking recently, um, not not actually hitting Haifa, but hitting a lot of places nearby Haifa. So it's, it's, a, it's a real move, it's a real change, I think, in Hezbollah's actions. It shows that they are, you know, they're really reeling from what's happened. I'm sure of those 120, most of them will have been intercepted by Iron Dome and other air defence systems, but there may well have been and literally the reports are coming in now about this, there may well have been uh, a number of Israeli casualties. There's been quite widespread fires caused in uh, in northern Israel by some of these rockets that have landed in, in, in probably mainly in open or forested areas. James. Well, what are the, what are the chances then now with um, these two... Iranian proxies, Hamas and Hezbollah, seriously weakened and disorganized, that Iran itself decides to step back into this uh, and escalate the conflict to basically avenge their proxies or buy them some time to keep the pressure on Israel. I, I, I can't see them just simply letting these two fronts fade back. Yeah, you're right. And, and although, as I just said, Hamas have been largely defeated, not totally destroyed, but largely defeated, a major, a major proxy of Iran. And now with Hezbollah under serious pressure in the north, 
uh, Iran, uh, Iran may well be tempted to wage, wage in itself and carry out a, maybe a similar kind of barrage of rocket attacks as it did on the 14th of April. And you can be sure, I know for sure that Arab countries like Jordan um, are ready to, um, to intercept Iranian rockets coming from either from Iran itself or from the Houthis in Yemen. Uh, and I'm sure also, I don't know this for certain, but I'd be surprised if Allied Air Forces like the US Air Force and the Royal Air Force uh, are not also already preparing themselves to help defend Israel. Israel's focus is clearly on the north, but it has to protect itself throughout the whole country as well. And, and as we saw on the 14th of April, its allies, I hope, will come to its uh, aid and, and try and minimize the damage that's being done by Iran and its proxies. But I think we are, it, I didn't really answer um, Rowan's question properly earlier. I think we are getting close to the point where Israel may feel now it's the time to carry out a major offensive into southern Lebanon to push, mm. to destroy parts of Hezbollah there and push the remnants back up north where they're not presenting quite such a threat and they're, thereby allowing the 60 to 80,000 uh, Israeli citizens who've been evacuated for about a year now to go back to their homes. Richard Kemp, fantastic always chatting to you. Uh, enjoy your time there in Washington and we'll chat again soon. Thanks so much for your insights.